The third element of store design is what we call feature areas. Uh, feature areas are areas within the store that are designed to get the customer's attention. Um, we're going to talk through we're going to talk through a, a bunch of the ones that are listed in your book, but there are more in your book than what we're going to focus on today. Um, so make sure you take a look at that. The first area that we're going to talk about are window displays. Um, window displays are used to display display specials or display merchandise to draw customers into a store. Uh, generally, they provide a visual message about a type of merchandise that can be found. So we're talking about a very specific type of merchandise that, hey, come inside and you can buy this. Window displays can also be used for napping. The second type of feature area that we're going to talk about are entrances. And entrances to retail stores are um, are very interesting and I don't know how much time you spend looking around when you walk when you very first walk into a retail store but I challenge you to do that when you walk into a store um, this week or this coming this coming weekend uh, entrances are the first impression so when you meet someone there's a first impression right and it's the same thing when you walk into a retail store uh, it's your first impression of the store and it can really have a large impact on how the customer thinks about your store what they think about your image um, now the first 10 feet of a retail store is known as the decompression zone and the, it's the decompression zone because customers are making an adjustment here to being in a new environment. So if you think about walking into the entrance of a, of a store, you are probably um, either escaping a crowded mall, you might be closing your umbrella, you might be putting your keys in your purse, you might be digging for coupons or your cell phone, you might be um, juggling three kids and trying to get their jackets unzipped and make sure you know they're not terrorizing the store in any way. Um, but you're very busy. You're very busy in that decompression zone. And so a lot of times you'll see clear space uh, you're not bombarded with merchandise as soon as you enter. Those first 10 feet are generally pretty clear. Uh, you might find a customer service desk or on a rainy day, like it's pouring rain right now. Um, you might find a, an umbrella display there. But generally, it's very calm when you first walk into a store. Um, the entrance is clear for you so that you can adjust to the space before looking up and seeing the merchandise. So it's always very interesting to me when I walk into a store, the first thing I do is like look around now um, and see what's going on in that decompression zone. You'll see a lot of freestanding displays uh, in retail locations. And so these freestanding displays, they can be temporary um, or they can be permanent. And so um, freestanding displays can be used for both product and information. So we see that example there of the Fruit of the Loom uh, display. Uh, generally, these are cardboard, and so they're more temporary, and they're generally provided by our supplier or the manufacturer, in this case, Fruit of the Loom. Um, and they're only temporarily used to display merchandise. And once they're empty or once a majority of the merchandise is sold, they're thrown away. You might also find permanent displays in retail stores. Uh, these might be used to display books or magazines or general information. I was actually in PetSense um, over the weekend, and they have freestanding displays that just have brochures with general information about your pet. And they're free to the customers, and they sit right, right next to that decompression zone, right in the entrance of the store or near the exit even rather, um, so that customers can pick up information. And so it encourages them uh, to get new additional information, which can potentially lead to sales. All right, we're going to talk about mannequins because mannequins are considered a feature area, even though they're really a thing. Um, and mannequins are a lifelike representation of the human body, and they're used for displaying apparel. Um, if you think about mannequins, uh, they're no longer just bald, shiny, white plastic space holders that are that are quite scary, to be honest. Um, but today, mannequins are much more lifelike. Uh, a lot of them even have faces and hair and skin color. Um, and mannequins, they can really help personify a brand. And so they offer an ideal image. 
And that, that image encourages the customers to purchase more. Mannequins are used for apparel, they're used for accessories, they're used for shoes. Um, they can also even be used to set up a room display. If you set up a kitchen display or a bedding display and you have mannequins in that space, it gives the customer an idea of, of an image that they could be purchasing. So mannequins are fantastic from a feature area perspective to increase sales, to um, increase impulse purchases or add-on purchases. When you walk into a retail, uh, an apparel retailer, and the mannequin has on a necklace with a top, uh, generally, as customers, most people can't pair those things quickly, especially in a retail setting when they're faced with 30 different options for tops and 30 different options for necklaces. How do you pick the perfect pair? Well, mannequins help customers pick the perfect pair. And so while the customer might not have chosen a necklace, because they've been able to see that pairing, they're more likely to buy that necklace. So mannequins are a great way to really increase impulse purchases and give that customer an ideal image of what that store has to offer. Okay, we're going to talk about a few others, um, and the first is end caps. End caps are, are displayed at the end of aisles in stores that use a grid layout. We don't see end caps in racetrack layouts or freeform layout, but they're in grid layouts. Um, and they generally display merchandise, uh, either new merchandise or very commonly purchased merchandise or merchandise that's on um, sale or clearance. Product sales increase dramatically when they're featured on end caps. And so that's why we use them for those high margin products, those impulse products, or that sale merchandise. Items we want to sell. Items we want to be purchased. Um, promotional areas and aisles are another type of feature area. Uh, you'll see these if you even if you've been to Kroger. Um, here in Milledgeville, they have the manager special aisle, and so everything in that aisle is on uh, deep clearance. Um, if you've been into Target, um, they have their summer promotional area, their seasonal area uh, up now. And if you've been into um, Walmart recently, you might have noticed that they have their garden uh, area, their promotional area, completely set up and ready to go for spring. Walls can be used as feature areas. Dressing rooms um, can be used as, as feature areas. Dressing rooms are very critical spaces in a retail store. Um, that is the place where shoppers decide whether or not to purchase an item. And so retailers have begun to compete aggressively on the quality of their dressing rooms, um, adding special lighting, adding mirrors, making it colorful, uh, maybe even putting like couches and TVs and uh, magazines and making it making it a very personal homey space so that again the customer can really truly get an idea um, get an image in their head uh, of what they will look like in that outfit or um, how that outfit pairs with different settings uh, so it really really the dressing room now has become a feature area that retailers are very aware of and the last one is the cash wrap uh, also known as the point of sale counter or the checkout area um, these are places where customers must must wait to purchase their merchandise. Uh, and so you'll see now a lot of retailers display um, impulse purchases such as candy, beverages, magazines. Um, Old Navy has an entire trinket display at their cash wrap. And these are really small items, generally inexpensive items that retailers are hoping customers will pick up as they wait in line um i actually like always i always think about uh black friday sales when i think about cash wraps because if you're in a um the, i was in uh, old navy and they always have just bins of socks and gloves and like little items um, along the cash wrap line that that just gets longer and longer and it's really to have customers uh look at these items while they're waiting and then add them to their to their purchase so feature areas um, are really something that cannot be overlooked by a retailer. You need to make sure that you're using all of the space available and setting your store up, designing your store in a way that does highlight specific areas and uses those areas to make sales. Um, and that kind of covers our general discussion on the three 
design elements that retailers must consider when setting up their retail establishment. Um, we're going to talk about space management next. Uh, we talk about space management. Space is a very scarce resource in a retail establishment. Um, and it's up to the it's up to the store manager to really determine how to best use the space available in that individual location. So again, they they think about how to apply the overall design and how to apply uh, the overall path and layout and and features of the store areas features of the store. But they also have to decide where the merchandise goes. And so one of the, the key decisions that, that the store manager has to make is where to put the merchandise. And so we're going to talk about um, types of merchandise and, and the best place to put it. Um, it's, it's kind of a it's an interesting thing. In Western culture, people enter the store and they turn right. Um, that's generally the direction we'll go. Catch yourself next time you walk into a retail establishment establishment which direction do you go when you walk into the store we're generally pulled toward the right um, unless we go into a specialty retailer that's divided half and half men and women um, we will we will turn to the right when we go into the store so uh, knowing that and understanding how the customer walks and where the customer is naturally drawn to kind of helps decide where we put things in the store and um, but let's talk about demand or promotional or seasonal or destination merchandise um, these are products that the customers already decided to buy before they go to the store. And so there's a lot of different different ways we can look at this type of merchandise. Um, it might be, uh, you know, your, your, your key items on your grocery list, such as bread and milk. Um, maybe it is a, uh, you need a new sprinkler for your backyard because the sun is beating down and, and turning the grass brown, right? So these are items that you've already thought about. Uh, going into the store. And so generally, um, these are placed uh, throughout the store and they're not ne necessarily next to each other. So if you think about your bread and your milk at, at Kroger, those are two items on everyone's list and they are placed very, very par far apart in the store. Uh, and that's to encourage customers to look at all areas of the store in an effort on their way to get those staple products. Or if you think about where the summer section, where the sunscreen is located at Target, um, it's not ever really in the front of the store. You have to go to the back left corner um, of just about any Target to find that seasonal area, whether it's summer or back to school or Christmas. Um, it's in the back of the store, so you have to walk past all the other merchandise. Where do you put your impulse merchandise? Uh, where do you put your small items that you want customers to add into their cart? Uh, generally, these are placed in high traffic areas of the store. So they might be near the escalators if you are a multi-level department store. Um, think about all the different types of small tables with merchandise next to the escalators. Uh, you might place it next to the cash wrap like we talked about with our feature areas. Um, here's a fun fact about multi-level stores. Uh, space value decreases the further you get from the main level. So that's a lot of time why perfume and makeup counters are on the first floor um, because customers aren't really willing to travel to the uh, to the other floors, right? So if we put our um, main merchandise on a second floor uh, or a lower level floor, but we know the customer has to enter and exit through the first floor, we're going to use that first floor space for our impulse purchases. Um, you'll see a lot of shoes, purses, accessories on the first floor, uh, and you'll see the main apparel or home goods. Um, on the other floors of a multi-level retail store. Let's talk about the location of special merchandise. So what is special merchandise? Well, again, it's kind of a broad category, uh, but I have a couple examples here for you. Uh, think about women's lingerie and where that's typically located in a store. It's typically located in a remote part of the store um, or off of the main aisle. And that is generally because uh, customers want a more private, calm buying experience for that type of merchandise. And so retailers have to think about where's the best place in that store to offer that private, calm buying experience. Uh, think about furniture. Furniture could be considered special merchandise because it's so dang big and it, every piece takes up so much space and you generally have to display pieces of that furniture. And so furniture um, is generally located in the back half of the store because it takes up a lot of space and you don't want to waste 
that big area of space in the front of the store, you want customers to have to walk back to that. Curtains could be considered special merchandise. If you sell curtains, where do you display them? Well, you need to display them on a wall where customers can actually see what they look like. Uh, where does the shoe department go? Well, the shoe department needs to be located near a stock room because you need easy access. You can't display every size and every color of every shoe on the floor. And so if you're not located directly next to a stock room, you're not going to be able to get those sizes for customers or get those colors for customers. So those are just general types of, of special merchandise that retailers have to consider. It's not so much about how do we put the best merchandise together or how do we put categories of merchandise in the right places? It's really considering how these special categories need uh, to use space in a retail store. And that helps guide a lot of those decisions. All right, so we've now covered the three overarching design elements of a store, and we've talked about how to locate um, special merchandise categories. Uh, in part four of this module, we are going to talk about um, how to create an atmosphere in your retail establishment. So stay tuned.